Hi, my name is Tim Hyland. I'm a physical therapist here at Champion Fitness in Leroy, Illinois, and I'm here today to talk a little bit about SI joint dysfunction. A lot of times uh, that will um, get lumped together with low back pain, but it's a specifically uh, significant diagnosis that's different from low back pain. So if you've been to the doctor and he's diagnosed you with low back pain, you've gone through a variety of different uh, options as far as treatment and still not received any significant relief, you may consider um, having him take a look at your SI joint. That can be a problem that uh, is hard to get resolved. And today I'm going to show you a little bit about uh, how to recognize it, what to look for, uh, how to address it, and then long-term uh, maintenance or uh, care to take care of it. All right, today here I've got a skeleton and uh, this is the back of the skeleton. What you see here is the pelvis, and the area that we are referring to is right in through here. This is your SI joint. This is your sacrum. This is your pelvis. This is where your backbone meets your pelvis. It's uh, usually just below your belt line, and uh, it provides some stability and a pivot point for your low back to work on your spine. A lot of times as a result of, uh, usually it's trauma, sometimes it can be other disorders, but uh, Trauma such as a fall, sometimes with a problematic uh, vaginal birth will have problems too. But what there is, there are certain ligaments on both sides here that are responsible for providing some stability at this joint. As a result of uh, whatever uh, incident that has created this, those ligaments have been strained. Much the same as a sprained ankle, we have sprained ligaments uh, that help support this joint. That provides an opportunity for some uh, instability in that joint and what we want to do today is see if we can address that instability and uh, enhance the strength and stability around there to minimize the effects and detrimental uh, issues that go along with that. So what we're going to be dealing with is this area right in through here. We're going to try to provide some stability around this. I'm going to bring in a few other options too to provide a little bit of a, uh, stability via taping as well. With me today, I have Amy, who has volunteered to be our subject in uh, demonstrating how we uh, assess SI joint dysfunction and then how we address it, okay? We're going to start off with a real simple method. I'm going to have her lay flat on her back, and I'm just going to use a simple method of, of uh, determining her leg length. And what I do is I just put my fingers on the little bony prominences here on the inside of her ankle. And what I'm looking for is uh, the distance the, uh, her leg length. So sometimes those will be different and if that's the case that usually results in a problem at the SI joint. So today we have a little bit of a difference here on this left side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take that left leg up and I'm going to keep her right leg right where it's at. I'm going to lift up her left leg as so just about as far as I can go comfortably. Okay and I'm looking for some input from Amy as far as tightness. Okay. So right about there I'm tight and what I'm going to do is simply try to distract that a little bit by hanging on and just leaning back using my body weight to distract that and what I'm doing is pulling on the ankle, the knee, the hip and the SI joint where I have the instability. What I'm trying to do is set that SI joint where it needs to be. I'm going to hold that for about, and I'm going to do that about three times. After three times, I'm going to let that leg back down and reassess my leg length, making sure that I'm perfectly square along the way. After a few repetitions, you will find that the legs will actually start to uh, take on the same length. So I'm going to do that one more time. I'm going to lift this leg up to the end of her comfortable range of motion, and I'm going to distract by just leaning back using my body weight to distract that. You should feel a little bit of give simply because I don't have the stability at that SI joint. And I'm going to let that back down and now I have got the proper length. Okay? If you don't have a uh, helper around, uh, you can self-correct yourself simply by doing what's known as a muscle energy technique. In this case what I'm going to have her do is bend this knee actually bend both knees, okay? Now, 
I'm going to assume that it's her left leg that's a little longer, so what I'm going to try to do is have her bring that left knee up towards her chest. She's going to put her hand atop that knee, and what I'm going to have her try to do is what's known as an isometric contraction. She is going to push the left knee towards her head and simultaneously push down with her hand to where there's no movement, but yet I have a significant contraction on that left side where knee goes towards head, hand goes towards foot. On the other leg, what I'm going to have her do is try to push that foot through the bed. So I have two opposing forces, one going one way, one going the other way, in an effort to get that SI joint to align correctly. Sometimes we'll do this on both sides, so I'll have her try it on the other side. Sometimes there will be discomfort, sometimes not, but what I'm trying to do is get those legs to be the same length as a result of correctly setting that SI joint. So she pushes down with one leg, up with the other, and then the hand provides some uh, external force to minimize the amount of movement. It's an isometric contraction. Muscle contraction, but no movement within the joint, or within the legs. One yeah. other way we have of self-correcting is pretty simple, and it's pretty easy to do. You just sit on the edge of the bed with your feet not touching if you can keep from it, and I'm just going to have her do some little circles by just shifting her weight from one side to the other and just making little circles. What that does, that helps to seat that SI joint correctly. We'll go one direction for about 10 repetitions, and then we'll go the other direction for about 10 repetitions. You shouldn't feel too much, because there's not a whole lot of weight bearing involved with this. But it's an effort to try to get that SI joint to correctly seat in the, its uh, proper position.